Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new Roblox video, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make more money from your Roblox games, okay? So this is actually going to be like a sort of a monetization guide, which basically means I'm going to help you monetize your game better or make more money from it, right? Um, that's kind of, you know, and really important when you're making Roblox games, you want to make Robux or money, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, it's definitely okay. And I'm going to teach you guys how you can actually maximize the amount of Robux you make, how that all works, and I'm going to teach you a lot in this video, so make sure to um, leave a like if you enjoy it. And subscribe for more videos like this. All right, let's go ahead and start. All right, so first things first, I want to show you guys this one quick stat to just show the potential of Roblox, okay? I know I've done this a million times, but I just want to show one quick thing, okay? So this is a paragraph from an article about Roblox. It was a CNBC article, right? Um, and now, okay, wait, I'll read this first, okay? So Roblox expects $1 billion in billings this year, okay? That means Roblox is going to make $1 billion in revenue this year. That's insane, okay? This is talking about 2020, right? And it says largely from in-app purchases. The company, based in Santa Mateo, California, sends 25% of that money to developers who use software called Roblox Studio to make games for the app. Okay, so 20, $1 billion in billings this year, and the company sends out 25% of that money to developers. If you do the math, that's obviously $250 million sent out to developers. And that's what you know they're expecting to do in this year that's that's insane right i mean that's a lot of a lot of money right so that's very very cool um it just shows that robust developers can make a lot of money and uh, you know it, it's just really possible so yeah anyways so yeah that's what it says but it says november that november like robux doesn't disclose revenue but dates data site sensors tower estimated in november that sales in 2019 up to that point had climbed 30 percent from all of 2018 so that's pretty cool they're climbing okay and also look at this it says developers earned more than 110 million last year very very cool stat sorry just very cool okay anyways <laughs> let's keep going all right so all right now i'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, an explanation of all the types of monetization and there's really kind of more i guess but these are just kind of the basic types that you need to know and i'll go over this really quick because most of you already know what game pass and developer products are but these two are actually a little bit more important all right so game passes are basically special passes that you can only be you can only buy once right everyone knows that um developer products though you can buy multiple times okay so um basically if you have like a currency or something like that or like a special power up that's limited uh or so lasts for a limited time you can buy that right certain things like that that's just a lot you can buy more than once right so um premium payouts are actually a new thing that roblox has recently introduced and basically what happens is Anytime a premium player is in your game, you're going to get a small amount of Robux for them just being in your game, right? Because, you know, Robux makes money off premium players, and they want more premium players. So if premium players are playing your game, then you'll make some money off of it. So that hopefully incentivizes you to get more premium players. Make sense? Um, so basically, you know, Robux wants you to, like, well, you don't have to, but sometimes, you know, they're actually, you know, promoting, like, offering premium in the game and, like, to buy it. So that's kind of cool, I guess. But I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. It doesn't seem like it's worth it just yet. Maybe in the future it will be, but... Premium payouts are actually generating a decent amount of revenue for some people. I know they are, and um, they're definitely viable for some people. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, so subscriptions, when a player plays periodically for an item, okay? So, basically, oh, pays, sorry. Um, basically, like, you know, subscriptions are just, like, you know, molds. you buy this every month or whatever, every week or whatever. And, like, unfortunately, they're not really easy to implement in Roblox right now. But, you know, think about stuff like battle passes, like that, have, that Fortnite has, right? They're becoming really popular. A lot of games have battle passes. I mean, literally... Every popular AAA game now has battle passes because Fortnite paved the way for that. And it was really cool that they did, but, um, you know, a lot of games are becoming free to play, and then they have a battle pass where they can unlock extra stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of Roblox games already are free to play, but I'm talking about, like, you know, other games, so yeah. Alright, now, even though this is hard to implement in Roblox, do not be surprised when this is easier in the future. Trust me, this will come out one day, I put money on it. Um, so yeah. Alright, anyways, next slide. Alright, so, how do you actually get ideas of monetization, okay? And if this is, just bear with me, guys, this tutorial is going to get really good, dude. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm going to teach you guys a lot of stuff in a second here. Alright, so, but first, I need to understand... Um, like, how do you get sources or how do you get monetization ideas, right? So how do you, you know, think of ideas for game passes or developer products for your game, all right? So first off, you want to go to other Roblox games, right? Popular Roblox games, preferably, and see what they're doing, right? Um, look at the top games um, and see if you can implement those into your own game. Because if they're doing, if they're doing really well with game passes and dev products, well, then they're obviously doing something right, right? So um, look at their game passes. That's pretty easy. You just hit the game pass button and then go into the actual game itself. See how they present these game passes to you. See how they sell them. Do they 
they sell them on a board? Do they sell them on a, on a screen GUI? Do they, um, you know, only prompt it every so often? Um, you know, how do they sell these game passes and, and dev developer products? Look at stuff like that, right? They're winning for a reason. Look at the top earnings. See how they're doing stuff, right? Just um, learn from people who already are doing what you want to do, right? Because it's going to save you a lot of time. All right, so if you just want an inspiration from other sources right besides Roblox, you know, go play your favorite game offside of Roblox, actually. Like, you know, games like Fortnite, Overwatch, Modern Warfare, these are literally like a billion dollar companies that make billions of dollars a year, and they're obviously doing something right, so why not learn from them? You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, just study other people, study other games, do, do that stuff. It definitely is worth it. So, yeah. Uh, anyways. Yes. Okay. So the all right. So here's two very easy money making strategies. Okay. Um. And I'm gonna explain a lot more in a second here. But these are just very two very easy ways to um make some quick money for your game. Or really not quick money, but just easy things to implement to almost any game. Right. All right. So basically, um, one of them is currency purchases. So basically, like you know, most games have their own currency, like coins or like Fortnite has V bucks, whatever. Um. You know, people will actually spend their own Robux to buy a currency in your game if that currency is useful in your game. So if your currency allows them to buy, you know, like a car or a special weapon or, you know, whatever it is, a pet, right? They're going to spend money on that because they can get that item easier, right? And they can save them a lot of time or they really want it really bad to show off their friends or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So that's a very easy thing you can add. Definitely add currency purchases. They're very big. Dev products, I'm telling you, make just as much as game passes, okay? Probably even more for most games. So um, definitely add that. That would be dev product, obviously. Um, but yeah, add, add a currency. I would recommend doing it for every game. But, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Um, but yeah. All right, anyways, random loot boxes, okay? So this is a very easy thing to add and people love these, okay? Um, um, think about any simulator, think about any front page game, they have something random in your game, right? Well, maybe not any, but almost all of them, right? Um, any game really, Jailbreak, you know, they have that crates, Adopt Me has eggs, um, Bloxburg, I guess Fox was already random, but most games have something random, okay? You know why? Because people love stuff that's random. They love playing the lottery, okay? Why do you think people play the lottery? Because they love, like, taking that chance to think they're going to get something. And maybe they will, um, but obviously not the lottery. I wouldn't recommend doing that at all. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying? People love that. So why not take advantage of human psychology and, you know, like, you know, human nature and actually just cater to that, right? You know, make a crate, make an egg that you can do. Now, uh, be careful with this as well because, you know, some people, or actually, just be careful with this. Don't, like, do stuff directly for rope, like, don't like sell a crate directly for Roblox or for Robux because I think that might be gambling in some countries. Um, I'm not sure. Look into that. But, you know, if you make your own currency and then, you know, have these eggs, that's completely fine. So, yeah. But when you're selling something like random for direct for Robux directly, um, that might be like against the law in some like European countries or something like that. I don't know. But look that up. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure about that. And as long as you're not showing like if you're not if you don't show like exactly what you can get out of it, it's illegal, I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, but you should be fine. Honestly, it's just Roblox. All right, anyway, so um, next slide. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and break down how most of your revenue is um, generated, okay, where most of your revenue comes from, okay? So below is a diagram that basically is showing, that shows you how users can become a whale for your game, okay? And a whale is someone who spends a lot of Robux on your game, all right? That's pretty simple. That's what it is, all right? Now, um, I've heard from for most games, okay, that at least 75% of a game's revenue is generated by only 1% to 5% of its player base, all right? Now think about that for a second, okay? 75% of the money the game makes is generated by only 1% to 5%. All right, so if you can increase that 1% to 5%, obviously you're giving a lot of money, right? Now basically, um, now whether that's accurate or not is like is really not true because you know even if your game doesn't have that, right? Um, like you know just one to five percent of its revenue coming from seventy five or seventy five percent of its revenue coming from one one to five percent of its people, right? What's for certain, okay, is that players who purchase something in a game are more likely to purchase something again, and that is a fact. Go to any game, go to any developer, that is a fact, and I know it is. All right, um, the more they purchase, the more likely they are to do it again, right? And obviously, those whales are what make you the most. Okay, so basically, as you can see here, it says new user. And then it goes to first purchase user, and then it goes to repeat purchase user, and then it goes to whale. Okay, so basically, you know, obviously a new user hasn't spent anything. First purchase is first purchase, repeat, repeat, and then a whale is just like you, you're, you're buying everything. All right, you're just, you're, you're spamming that buy button, buy, 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 buy. Okay, <laughs> they just, they want to spend money on your game because they like it so much, and yeah. Also, this diagram is by a guy named Perlden, so yeah, credit to him. Anyways, um, yeah, that's um, what this, yeah. All right, so anyways, um, just keep this in mind, okay? Um, so basically. 
now that we have that information, what can we do with it, right? Well, now that we know that you know purchases are more or purchasers are more likely to purchase again, uh, we need to un incentivize players to make that first purchase, but not only make the first purchase, but turn them all the way into whales, right? So. So how do we actually do that? Okay, now what I'm going to do is actually go and explain how to turn non-purchasers to purchasers, purchasers into multi-time purchasers, and then multi-time purchasers into whales, okay? Um, I have some strategies for that. Um, also, you look them up, you know, learn about it. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what um, I've seen and what I kind of do. So, yeah. All right, anyways, so step one to make a user purchase something, okay? This is probably the most difficult step, okay? You are going to... Okay, okay, okay. This, all right, all right. This is the most difficult step, all right, probably by far. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you something real quick, okay? You're you're not going to, okay, you, okay, if you play a game, you're not gonna buy something 30 seconds after joining the game, all right? And neither is anyone else, okay? Nobody joins a game and says, 30 seconds later, oh, why not spend my money on this game? They've played it for 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? They don't care about this game just yet, all right? So don't put purchases in front of somebody that quickly, right? Just keep this up in mind, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. People do that a lot, and it's just something just to think of. All right, anyways, so have your shops and stuff, but don't add pop-ups that quickly, okay? That's what I mean by that. All right, anyways, so once a player, um, or a strategy that's commonly used, right, is once, a, like, a player reaches a, a milestone, like, maybe, like, 20, 30 minutes in the game, they'll, you know, like, want to actually congratulate themselves, right? So uh, when a player is playing your game, and they reach a certain milestone, they're, they're thinking, okay, wow, I kind of like this game, I have a little bit of time invested into it, maybe invest some money into it, you know what I'm saying, because maybe I want to get a little bit further, a little bit quicker, okay? So offer them something. Offer like a starter bundle, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Give them like a pack with coins, special items, something like that, an extra level, maybe, you know, whatever it is, make it feel like cheap, though, you know, you, you want them to be able to like, think, okay, you know, I guess I can get this real quick, because it's, it's cheap, you know, I like this game, blah, 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 all right, so, um, Stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Offer them something once they reach a certain milestone because they want to be rewarded and they want to congratulate themselves, right? So, yeah, that's like how you can get your first purchase, right? Obviously, a lot of other strategies too, but this is just one quick thing that people do to get the first purchase. All right, anyways, now that we have the first purchase, we want to turn that multi we want to turn that one purchase into a multi-purchaser, all right? So how do we do that? Oh, okay. Make the user purchase again, all right? That's step two. So since the player has already purchased, they're already more engaged in the game, okay? Because now, not only have they invested their time, but now their money into it, okay? Which is good, all right? Um, if you watched my last video about how to get, like, a front page game, I actually explained that, you know, you know, the players are more engaged when they're not only spending time, but money in the game, too. All right, anyways. So now, since the player is actually engaged in the game, they want to become better at it, all right? So they'll do things like see your game's currency. They'll see, like, a two times coins pass. They'll see, like, a two times level pass, right? They, they realize what it does, and they might want to buy some of it, all right? So, um... You start letting them see this stuff, right? I mean, you can show them beforehand, but start letting them see this stuff. You want them, you want them to be able to actually have these things in front of them, okay? Have stuff that they can buy, all right? That's a problem, too. A lot of people only have, like, two game passes and, like, just not enough stuff, right? Add more content to your game, okay? Um, also, if you have, like, crates... Um, like I suggested earlier, um, they are more likely to be interested in getting those items too, um, and also feel free to do the same thing for getting the first purchase. All right, so uh, if you want, like you know, after they hit another milestone, offer another thing for them, like two times coins or something like that, right? Um, and also stuff like, like, uh, like yeah, I'm trying to think, like, um, like you know, when a player wants to buy something, okay, and it's cost five thousand coins, but they only have five hundred coins, and they click that item, put up a dev product that. Um, you know, that, that buys them or that prompts them to buy, you know, 4,500 coins or like 5,000 or whatever the certain product is. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, give them, give them what they want, right? So, when they, when they want to buy something but they don't have enough for it, in, instead of just saying, oh, sorry, you can't buy this, say, okay, you can't buy this, but do you want to buy coins for it right now? And then that's going to, you know, help your conversions, help you make more money. Um, so, yeah, do that. A lot of people miss out on that too. All right, step three. Now that we have multi-time purchasers, we want to turn them into whales, okay? So um, this is the final stage, all right? And really, this kind of depends on, like, the player's actual income and how much money they have and also, like, kind of their personality. Like, do they want to spend them a lot of Robux in your game? Do they want to buy everything? You know what I'm saying? Um, but now you need to make sure the players actually have enough content they can purchase, okay? Um, at this point... Like I said, it, it really just depends on the actual income and personality. There's really not much you can do with this one. Um, but if if players have enough stuff they can buy, well, then, you know, they're going to spend more money, right? Because they're already invested into your game. They like your game. They're engaged, and they want to spend more money, okay? So uh, make sure the game still has content. Make sure they're still playing the game. Make sure they can still play the game for longer, okay? And, uh, you know, also, if the initial conversion process is working, like, you know, you're, you're prompting whenever they reach a certain milestone, 
keep using it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. All right, and also you want to make sure you're actually like adding constant updates to your game. Um, so the whale actually have more stuff to spend money on, right? And make sure you're adding new content that your player can spend money on, right? Um, and also, you know, add new random loot boxes or uses for currency or whatever products you can. So yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. This is honestly a very helpful, a very helpful tutorial. Okay, I, I seriously, this is a lot of knowledge in one thing. Uh, also, I, I got a lot of info from this um, developer post on the dev forum. Shout out to that guy. Um, but yeah, um, this is a, seriously it's super helpful. Um. I'm telling you guys, if you utilize this stuff, you will see an insane increase in revenue, okay? Just seriously, like, not only watch these tutorials, but, you know, apply what they're telling you to, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I want everyone to be successful. That's why I make these videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, there's still a beginner's guide in monetizing, though. There's not too much information in this one. If you guys want more stuff on that, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like to let me know. Do whatever you want. Um, and subscribe for that later, too. Um, uh, a lot more informative robust content coming very soon. Stay tuned for that. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know. You did, let me know if you did in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.